Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. As we were singing, Santa Delight, I was singing at the windows, and the light is shining bright. Amen. So, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for uh, sending the light to each and every one of us. I will be sharing a word from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 uh, this morning. When a person is about to die, families are gathered together around the person and they are waiting for the last breath of the person and at the same time they are waiting for the last words that will come from the dying person. It's hard to think sometimes when people die but sometimes we have to admit that life has its end. It's an end for one of us who die. And when a man or a person dies, they are uh, normally waiting for what will the person will say for the last time. That would be the last message of the person. In the book of uh, Second Timothy, the Apostle Paul is facing death. He's facing death. He's not going to die because of the disease, but his life is uh, in terminal. I mean, it's about to end. He was convicted for following Jesus Christ. He was sent to prison and he is waiting for his execution. And that's the reason why the Apostle Paul gave his last instruction to Timothy. He said in verse 2 of chapter 4, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. That's his final instruction to Timothy. And then, what's the reason why he says that? He continues by saying, for the time will come with men who will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. And then they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. And then in verse 5, he continued by saying what a Christian should do. But you, he said, keep your head in all situations. And the ESB Bible it says, always be sober minded. Which means that we shouldn't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. That's Ephesians 5. 18 says. And then he said, endure hardship. In the previous verse, uh, the previous uh, chapter, chapter 3, verse 12, he says, you will experience hardships. So he says here, endure hardship. And then number 3, he says, do the work of an evangelist and then discharge all the duties of our ministry. Each and every one of us has its own ministry. It may be helping in the children's class with Tanya. Maybe your uh, ministry is in the music ministry. You can join us in the uh, in singing. Or 
just right now, in just a few days, we we'll don't have the janitor. Maybe your ministry will be cleaning the church. You can do that. Or maybe just uh, cleaning. Yes, today we will have a fellowship in the, in the conference center in uh, Alan Ferrer. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, then after that, we eat. you can help wash the dishes. That might be about your ministry. But all of us, all of us should do the work of an evangelist. You may not have to go from town to town to preach the gospel. You can do that by sharing the gospel to your family, to your friends, to your co-workers. Who knows? By doing that, a person might accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So, and don't be afraid. In our No Regret conference yesterday, the theme that we have in the conference is Isaiah 41, verse, verse 10, where it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So brothers and sisters, let's do the work of the evangelist. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this uh, day that you have given us. Thank you for the word of encouragement that uh, has been spoken to each and every one of us. And we pray, Lord God, that as what uh, uh, the Apostle Paul instruct uh, Timothy, we as Christians also have to do. And uh, Father God, we pray the prayer 